Hello and welcome to another Purveyor of Light Photoshop Quick Tip. Uh, today we're going to cover sharpening and the various, you know, there's all kinds of various techniques to sharpening. And I'm going to show you one here that's become my favorite way of doing sharpening. I think it's very uh, capable, gives you the best results, and uh, gives you great control as well to the sharpening. Okay, so... I'm going to uh, take this macro photo here of a hornet. Uh, I can tell you stories about hornets. I live in Hornet City. Uh, these are mean creatures. All right, and I think they have a memory. They go after you. All right, so I'm going to duplicate the background layer. Command and Control J. Okay, so click on that. Command and Control J. That duplicates the layer. All right. So the next thing I want to do is I want to uh, desaturate the layer. In other words, turn it to black and white because we don't want color interfering with what we're doing for sharpening, okay? And I know that seems counterintuitive, but trust me, it works very well. So to desaturate your layer, uh, it's Command or Control, Shift plus U, okay? So Command if you're on a Mac, Control if you're on a PC, Shift plus U. In my case, it's Command, Shift, U. And that desaturates the image. Okay, so now we have a total black and white image. And we are now going to change the blend mode of this layer that we created here. And we're going to change it to Linear Light. Okay, and you can see it looks absolutely hideous, right? All right, but that's because we're working on this thing here. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a high-pass filter. So, filter, and then other, and then high-pass. And then that's going to give us our little box here. And I know a lot of people have problems with this, but I'm going to give you a little cheat here. It depends on the resolution of your photo, how high a resolution, you know. But if you're in the neighborhood of a 24 megapixel picture image, about a radius of three is really, really good. Uh, if you have a higher, you may want to go up as high as maybe five pixels, okay? But never go behind, beyond that. All right, so I'm going to choose three on this image, and I'm going to hit OK. All right, and now I want to turn it, turn it off and on. Now I'm going to come in here so you can see the effect, okay? Off and on, you could see how much more detail we are bringing in on this, okay? Now, there's one last thing that I would do here is, and this applies to all, all sharpening, okay, in my opinion. Never do a global sharpening of an image. It's, that's criminal, okay? There's no reason we don't want to sharpen this creamy background. We don't want to turn around and sharpen what we don't want to because that introduces noise, especially if you have shadows. So what we do here is we're just going to jump back to the bottom here, image, and I'm going to go on that and I'm going to say select subject. That's going to give me a rough selection of the uh, Hornet. I'm going to click back onto that uh, sharpening layer and I'm going to hit the mask. And we now have it automatically isolated to the mask. Okay, so now we come in. I want you to pay close attention looking at the background. Okay, this creamy green. Okay, if I disable the mask, okay, you can see all this noise that we introduce into the background. We don't want that. Okay, so that's why we're only sharpening the areas of the image that we want. Okay, and then we have that nice creamy thing. And again, to turn around and uh, move your picture here, take it up so you can look, and we do the before and the after. And so you can target your sharpening results and get fantastic results. Now, don't trust me on this. Compare it to your normal whether you use Camera Raw to sharpen or you use, you know, your own sharpening methods, uh, 
compare it to what you get here, I think you're going to find that linear light with a high pass is going to give you the highest results. Okay. All right. So let's do one more. All right. So let's, uh, let's grab another photo down here and we'll go down on my download one and I will just drop this into Photoshop and okay. I'm a little, uh, little ADH. I can't stand it when the photo is not sure, not straight and that. So we got some to do. All right. So I'm going to open it just as it is. And, um, I've got to, I'm sorry, but I got to turn around and fix it. I can't stand when the, the background is not straight on the crop. So I'm just going to grab the crop tool and I'm going to hit straighten. And then I'm just going to follow the bridge. And that'll straighten that. And now I have a better image that's now. All right. So the next thing I'll do is maybe I'll turn around and um, make a curved layer, do an auto just for now. And that'll be good enough. And so we have the image and we've got just a mishmash of, of dynamic range in here. And what we want to sharpen and what we don't want to sharpen is, is a, is a big deal here, right? We we don't want to, to sharpen everything because that would just introduce all kinds of noise, especially into the, the shadows that are in here. That'll just introduce noise and we don't want to introduce noise. Okay. So I'm going to turn that off for now on the background layer. What am I going to do? Command and control J to duplicate it. So now we have the duplicate layer and now I'm going to desaturate, right? Command or control shift U. So, and now that layer is desaturated to black and white. We're going to change the blend mode to what? Linear light, right? Very good. And now we're going to do a filter and then other and then bypass. And now we could just, just do the thing. We can come in and do as little or as much as we want. We'll take it at three for now. And you can already see that it is already crunched up everything tremendously. Okay. We turn it off. It's made the image incredibly crunchy. Now, if you just want to lessen the effect, okay, on linear light, the way you do that is with the fill uh, level. If you do the fill, you could turn around and just reduce the effect and that will reduce the effect on the thing. All right. Now, but I have a better way here. <clears throat> I have a rule that <clears throat> never sharpen the shadows because shadows are shadows. They are dark points. And when you try to sharpen any shadows, you introduce noise. It blocks up everything, up, makes it muddy, ugly. So let's use Blend If. So we'll use Blend If on this layer. And I will take the underlying area and I will drag it away. Okay. And what I'm doing is I'm restricting it from not hitting the dark areas. Then I'll hit the Alter Option key to split this and maybe drag it in. To like so and i'm just using my eye on what areas we are affecting all right now 128 would be a, a gray right um so anything in that area is going to be now not affected all right can we hit that okay so now when we look at this we could see we're only sharp look how we're sharpening only the midtones and highlights we've restricted the sharpening to that level. Okay. So again, we're able to use blend if to control what parts of the photo get sharpened. Okay. But again, the technique is the same. All right. It's just a simple matter of duplicating it, desaturating the layer, then running a high pass filter on it, anywhere from say two to five max 
on the pixels and then put a mask on to control or you could even brush which areas you wanted to sharpen. But that's the basic technique. And I think you'll find out that it really does make a fantastic targeted adjustment. And uh, I think you'll find it, again, to be your most preferred way of sharpening photos. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me this week. Till next week, you guys take care.